99% of developers don't get LLMs. Just because you query ChatGPT for dating advice, use it as your personal therapist, and ask it to write all your research papers and do your homework doesn't mean you have any idea how it works internally. Adding the word AI before your startup's name doesn't make it a moonshot, despite the fact that it's a literal ChatGPT wrapper. Just like how calling OpenAI's API doesn't make you an AI engineer. You've definitely heard of OpenAI, whose brainchild is GPT-40. And if you're a developer, you've most likely used Google's Gemini 2.5 or Anthropic's Claude Sonnet 3.7, with Claude's goaded coding capabilities. But isn't it at least a little bit sad that you have no idea what is happening behind the curtain? Sure, you can argue that it's all abstracted away and it's a neat little black box, but this is important to know. Whatever happened to intellectual curiosity? In this video, I'll explain everything you need and wanted to know about LLMs. What is an LLM really doing? At the most fundamental level, a large language model is a system trained to predict the probability distribution of the next token in a sequence of tokens or text fragments. It learns to do this by being trained on an immense corpus of human-generated text, from books and code to conversation logs and websites. By solving this next token prediction problem over billions of examples, the model begins to internalize not just grammar and syntax, but relationships between concepts, logical reasoning chains, world knowledge, and even sociolinguistic patterns like tone and persuasion. Importantly, LLMs are not trained to answer questions or follow instructions directly. Instead, those abilities emerge because they are useful patterns in human language that help minimize prediction error. In other words, the ability to perform seemingly intelligent tasks is a side effect of a very general statistical training objective. The transformer architecture is what makes LLMs viable at scale. It solves a key problem with earlier sequential models like RNNs and LSTMs. They processed input one step at a time, which made it difficult to capture long-range dependencies or parallelized training. Transformers change this by processing all tokens in a sequence simultaneously, and using self-attention to let each token dynamically look at others to gather relevant context. This lets the model build richly contextualized representations of each token, not just what the token is, but what it means in context with other tokens. A transformer block has two essential parts, multi-head self-attention and a feed-forward network. Multi-head self-attention allows the model to attend to different aspects of the input in parallel. Each head learns to focus on different patterns. One might detect subject-verb agreement, another might track quotation marks, and another might identify causal links. This parallelism helps the model build richer representations of language. After attention, each token is passed through a feed-forward neural network that transforms its contextual embedding in a non-linear way. Without this non-linear transformation, the successive layers of the transformer would be mathematically equivalent to a single larger linear transformation. This would limit the model's capacity as it would only be able to learn linear relationships, effectively collapsing the deep architecture into a shallow one. This non-linearity lets the model build hierarchical and abstract representations, like moving from what this word is to what role this word plays in the bigger idea. These blocks are stacked in deep layers, 120 layers in GPT-4, allowing the model to build up complex layered understanding. Self-attention is arguably the most critical innovation in LLMs. For every token, the model computes how much attention it should pay to every other token in the sequence. This isn't hard-coded, it's learned during training and it changes based on the input. For example, in the sentence, the doctor told the nurse that she was late, attention helps the model determine whether she refers to the doctor or the nurse by focusing on the most relevant parts of the context. This mechanism allows the model to dynamically model dependency, co-reference, causality, and relationships regardless of position. This is a significant departure from older architectures like recurrent neural networks or RNNs, which process information sequentially and struggle to connect words that are far apart in a sentence. So this provides the ability to capture long-range dependencies. Each attention head captures different patterns, and by aggregating them, the model gains a multifaceted view of the sentence. As information flows through layers, early attention may focus on structure, like identifying verbs, while later layers integrate meaning and intent. I want to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, Browserbase. If you've ever needed to pull data or automate a task on a website, you've likely entered the world of headless browsers. These are real browsers like Chrome that run on a server without a visible UI, allowing you to control them with code. For years, this meant using libraries like Selenium, Puppeteer, or Playwright. The problem is these tools are brittle and deterministic. You write a rigid script that gives the browser step-by-step -step instructions. Find this exact CSS selector, click this specific ID. It's powerful, but that brittleness means your script breaks the moment a developer 
changes the class name, forcing you into constant, tedious maintenance. This is the exact problem Browser-based set out to fix. It's a new low-code builder called Director that writes automation code for you. Instead of writing a rigid script, you just describe the task you want to automate in plain English. For example, you can literally type, go to the stagehand repo by Browser-based and get me the latest PRs. As Director analyzes that request and performs the actions on the right, it's actually generating a robust script for Browser-based's AI-enhanced framework, Stagehand. Stagehand is what's controlling the browser. It uses an LLM to dynamically generate code and understand your intent. This means your automation is dramatically more resilient. This provides a powerful new way to build web automation for AI agents and applications. It allows you to go from a simple instruction to a functional automation in minutes, bypassing all the fragile, hard-coded details that made older scripts so prone to failure. It's free to get started, and the Browser-based platform has a seriously generous free plan. Check out Browser-based's new director using the link in the description. So how does generation work? work. When you prompt an LLM, the model produces a probability distribution over the vocabulary for the next token. This is done by computing a score called a logit for each token based on the current context representation. At its core, a logit is a raw, unnormalized score produced by a language model for each possible next word or token in a sequence. Think of it as the model's initial, uncalibrated gut feeling or confidence score for every word in its vocabulary based on the input it has processed. Then, these scores or logits are transformed into probabilities using a soft max function. So softmax converts these raw scores into a more interpretable format. The function converts all the logit scores into positive numbers and normalizes these scores so they add up to 1. The top tokens might be, for instance, 40% mat, 20% sofa, 5% floor, and so on. The model then samples from this distribution, possibly with some tricks like temperature to control the randomness, or top K or nucleus or top P sampling. Top K sampling is very straightforward. At each step of the generation process, the model considers only the K most likely next words. For nucleus or top P sampling, it's a bit more dynamic. Instead of selecting a fixed number of top words, it chooses the smallest possible set of words whose cumulative probability exceeds a certain threshold, P. For example, if P is set to 0.9, the model will consider the most probable words until their combined probability reaches 90%. After sampling, the sampled token is added to the prompt and the process repeats. The main insight is that the entire output is a rolling chain of probabilistic next token predictions with each prediction conditioned on everything generated so far. While this might sound simple, it gives rise to sophisticated behavior because language itself is structured, recursive, and knowledge-rich, and the model has deeply internalized these structures. Why does scale matter? As models grow in data, parameters, and training compute, they begin to exhibit emergent behaviors, capabilities that weren't explicitly taught or present in smaller versions. For example, smaller models may struggle with multi-step reasoning or code synthesis, but beyond a certain scale, these skills seem to switch on. This phenomenon is not fully understood, but it suggests that generalization improves with scale. The model begins to interpolate and even extrapolate beyond training data in ways that resemble general intelligence. Bigger models can form more expressive internal representations, capture more abstract patterns, and resist overfitting to surface-level correlations. These behaviors aren't just due to memorization. They arise because the optimization process uncovers compressed representations of high-level concepts that generalize well to new inputs. How do we make raw models useful to people? The base LLM trained on next token prediction can produce fluent text but may be misaligned with human values or expectations. To fix this, modern LLMs go through reinforcement learning with human feedback, or RLHF. This process has three steps. Number one, the model is fine-tuned on instruction-like data, so it starts responding in a helpful, structured way. Number two is that human labelers rate multiple responses to the same prompt, for example, helpful versus harmful, verbose versus concise. And number three, a separate reward model is trained to predict these preferences. And then this reward model is used to fine tune the base model via reinforcement learning, often using PPO or proximal policy optimization. This loop makes the LLM safer, more useful, and aligned with human norms. It learns to optimize not just for what's probable, but for what's desirable. RLHF is one of the main reasons ChatGPT is conversational and polite rather than just fluent. How about the term mechanistic interpretability? LLMs work incredibly well, but why they work remains partially mysterious. Mechanistic interpretability is a research area focused on reverse engineering the internals of these models. For instance, attention heads can be traced to specific functions like resolving pronouns, detecting quotation boundaries, or counting brackets in code. Entire subnetworks, sometimes called circuits, are thought to implement modular logic, like performing multi-digit addition or translating syntax trees. 
Some researchers use activation patching, which means modifying or freezing parts of the network during inference to isolate what components are responsible for specific behaviors. The ultimate goal is to transform opaque neural weights into human-readable explanations. And of course, with this, we would get better debugging, safety, and even accountability. But let's not get too sidetracked. Let's understand what LLMs are not. A couple limits and misconceptions. Despite their fluency and apparent intelligence, LLMs are not agents. They're not fact databases, and they are not conscious. They don't have beliefs, persistent memory unless explicitly given, or a model of the world beyond what they inferred from training data. They often hallucinate facts, cannot truly verify or reason like humans, and sometimes fail at long-term coherence, especially when generating very long outputs. They are also sensitive to phrasing, can be subtly manipulated, and reflect the biases and limitations of their training data. These risks grow as the models get more capable, which is why safety, alignment, and transparency research, including interpretability, RLHF, and constitutional AI, are increasingly critical. I'm excited to announce a special opportunity for our community this June. We're hosting a Build Your Own Shell Challenge with CodeCrafters. For the entire month of June, you can take on this challenge for free. We'll have our own Coding Gopher community leaderboard to track our progress, and we'll be giving a special prize to the top finisher, plus three months of free access to CodeCrafters. The prizes for this contest are AirPods Pro 2, an Aura Ring 4 Black, or a Keychron Q1 Pro. Also, anyone from our community who completes any CodeCrafters challenge in June will get five bonus entries to win the lottery. Logitech MX Mechanical Combo Giveaway. So if you're ready to build, check out the link in the description. If you learned something new today, please consider giving the video a like and subscribe for more future content like this. If you want to support me further, I've left my Patreon in the description below. As always, thank you very much for watching and happy coding.